Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Top 5 Wednesday. The topic for this week is books not set in or inspired by Western culture and I had a really tough time finding five books that I'd read outside of Western culture and it actually made me realise how much I want to and how much I probably need to read more diversely in that sense because I would really love to find some books that aren't anything to do with British, American, Australian, um, Western European culture. So I would really, really love to see other people's recommendations for the topic this week. Um, I have managed to cobble together five books that um, aren't inspired by Western culture but I think some of them may be a little bit iffy whether they are actually accurate or whether they are actually steeped in Western culture. So I'm just going to get right on into it and the first one I'm going to talk to you about is the Grisha Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Um, this was apparently inspired by Russian folk tales and Russian fairy tales, but I know some people have said that it is wildly inaccurate to actual Russian culture and Russian stories. I don't know, I've never been to Russia, I've read very little about Russia and Russian culture, um, but it is ultimately a fantasy. It's not supposed to be actual Russia, so therefore I'm not entirely sure whether the inaccuracies matter all that much, um, but it's a fantasy trilogy that I've read and enjoyed. I I think I probably prefer the Six of Crows Crooked Kingdom duology a little bit more than the actual Grisha trilogy itself but um, yeah there are Russian influences in it so yeah. The next one I want to talk to you about is And I Darken by Kirsten White. Um, the second one is out now too, but I haven't read that yet. Um, this is a um, take on the story of Vlad the Impaler and his apparent children. Um, they were um, monarchs in the kingdom of Wallachia, which used to be part of Romania, and um, they were taken captive by the Ottoman Empire. So it is steeped in that whole period of history, and I'd never read a um, YA um, history historical adventure story set in um, that time period about that dynasty before so that was really interesting I really really enjoyed this book and I'm really excited to go on to the second um, one I think it's going to be a trilogy um, so yeah really excited to continue with this series again I don't know how accurate it actually is to those um, to those time periods and those kingdoms but um, yeah really enjoyed them the next one I want to talk to you about is Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi and this is a graphic novel that I read very very recently. The graphic novel is literally just the simple sort of black and white style. Um, this is about a girl, a girl's coming of age story in Iran during the Islamic revolution and it was just really really funny, really sweet. Um, I learned a lot about a culture and about a period of history that I didn't really know all that much about before. Um, she eventually goes to college in Vienna so she gets to compare the childhood and the culture that she's grown up with with western culture in that sense and then she comes back to Iran as an adult where things have changed um, but it's all about basically growing up female in Iran and in an Islamic country but it was really really great I thoroughly recommend it to anyone who is interested in um, Islamic culture and particularly the period of the Islamic revolution in Iran so yeah. The next one I want to talk to you about is White Sagasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This is a prequel to Jane Eyre um, about Mr. Rochester's first wife who becomes Bertha or the mad woman in the attic in Jane Eyre. Um, she was from Jamaica and basically this little prequel story um, talks about her childhood in Jamaica and how she came to be sold as a wife to Mr. Rochester and basically her doomed marriage to him when she came over to England as his wife. Um, it's a very very sad and tragic story um, but if you've already read Jane Eyre I would certainly recommend reading Jane Eyre before you read this one because I don't think you would really get the same effect um, but um, yeah it's really really interesting and just knowing about you know the fact that those things happened the fact that those Caribbean women were sold to British men and Western men just because of who they were in some marriage. They had not really any choice in it. Um, so yeah, that was really, really heartbreaking and very, very enlightening. And the last one I want to talk to you about is Stay With Me by Ayobami 
Adi Bayal. I have probably literally just butchered that name. I read this very recently and I'm going to talk about it in my wrap up for this month. But this is set in 1980s Nigeria about a woman who is struggling to conceive. So her husband's family insist that he takes a second wife in order for him to be able to have children. But there's a lot more going on. It's a very complex story. Um, it spans over several years. It's very, very hard hitting, very, very sad. Um, but again, very, very enlightening. I'd never really read any African literature before. This was actually nominated for the um, Bailey's Prize for Women's Fiction last year. So that might be why you've seen it around maybe a few on a few other booktube channels recently. But um, yeah, I will talk about it more in my wrap up. But um, again, it was very, very enlightening, very heartbreaking and taught me a lot about a culture that I knew absolutely nothing about. And that is it for this week's Top 5 Wednesday. What are some of your favourite books not set in or inspired by Western culture? Please let me know because I would love some more books about cultures that I know literally nothing about. I will leave all of my social media in the description down below. I hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye bye!